Hello everyone. So today we are going to learn something about dentinal hypersensitivity. I am Dr. Rajesh. I am currently working as professor and uh, head of the department of uh, periodontology at Enapoya Dental College, Mangalore. So we are going to look at the definition of dentinal sensitivity, theories regarding the dental sensitivity the clinical features, how to diagnose this condition and also how to manage this common problem. Quite often we experience a sensitivity when we take a cold food or a sweet item in our mouth. So the term tooth hypersensitivity, dentinal sensitivity or sensitivity is often used interchangeably to describe a clinical condition of an exaggerated response to an exogenous stimulus. So there are various uh, definitions for this uh, terminology. Definition is important to understand the actual meaning of the term and what it describes. So the dentine hypersensitivity is characterized by a short sharp pain arising from exposed dentine in response to stimuli typically thermal, evaporative, tactile, osmotic or chemical and which cannot be ascribed to any other form of dental defect or pathology. Canadian Advisory Board on Dentine Hypersensitivity in 2003 also substituted the term disease for pathology identifying dentine hypersensitivity to be a distinct clinical entity. Dentinal hypersensitivity can be described as an adverse reaction or pain in one or more of teeth resulting from either a thermal mechanism or a chemical stimulus. So there are few theories which explain the way in which the dental sensitivity is initiated. Important ones are the direct stimulation or neural theory, odontoblastic transduction theory and hydrodynamic theory. So let's go through these different theories in a certain detail. So the direct stimulation or neural theory advocates that thermal or mechanical stimuli directly affect the nerve endings within the dental tubules through direct communication with the pulpal nerve fibers. So the neural theory considered that the entire length of the tubule contains free nerve endings as we can see on the uh, schematic picture here. But this theory is no longer accepted for good reasons. The next one is an odontoblastic transduction theory which suggested that the odontoblasts act as receptor cells mediating changes in the membrane potential of the odontoblast via synaptic junctions with the nerves resulting in the sensation of pain from the nerve endings located in the pulp dentine border. This theory is also no longer accepted in its completeness. The third one is hydrodynamic theory which is currently the most widely uh, acceptable theory and Branstorm and his co-workers in 1963 stated that sensitivity of dentine is based on the stimulus induced either temperature or osmotic changes fluid flow in the dental tubules and consequent nociceptor or mechanoreceptor activation in the pulp dentine border area. So as you can see in the picture, whenever there is a stimulus, either a temperature change or osmotic change or even a mechanical uh, rubbing on the surface, it can initiate a fluid flow within the dental tubule and uh, rather uh, initiate the uh, sensory input to the odontoblastic endings. So as we have understood whenever there is a stimulus there is a fluid flow in the dental tubules and excitation of interdental nerves and the individual experiences the pain or the sensitivity. So what are the different stimuli that can initiate this kind of a response? mechanical or tactile stimuli which, which can include uh, the 
passing of an explorer or a probe on the surface of the exposed dentine, mechanical pressure stimulators or constant pressure probe like an EPL probe or a handheld scratch device developed by Kleenberg. Chemical stimuli can be hypertonic solutions for example sodium chloride, glucose, sucrose and calcium chloride and the electrical stimulation may be through electrical pulp testers or dentine pulp stethoscope. Evaporative stimuli could be one from cold air blast from a dental air syringe, air jet stimulator and air thermal system, temptronic device or a microprocessor temperature controlled air delivery system. Thermal stimuli can be through cold water or hot water, electronic threshold measurement device or thermoelectric devices or simply an ethyl chloride spray or an ice stick. So what are the it, what is the etiology and what are the predisposing factors? Aggressive or poor oral hygiene, both can initiate dentinal sensitivity. Intrinsic or extrinsic chemical agents, so both may initiate or cause gingival recession or erosion and the subsequent dentinal exposure through either enamel loss or gingival recession can open up the dental tubules, disturb the flow of the fluid and stimulate A delta nerve fibers and thereby causing dentinal hypersensitivity. What are the common reasons for gingival recession? One is inadequate attached gingiva, prominent roots of teeth, toothbrush abrasion, oral habits resulting in gingival laceration that is stomatic tooth picking or eating hard foods, excessive tooth brushing or cleaning, excessive flossing, Gingival recession secondary to specific diseases like ENERG or periodontitis. Sometimes even crown preparations also can cause some amount of gingival recession. So what are the clinical manifestations of dentinal uh, sensitivity? It's a chronic condition with acute episodes of exacerbation depending on the availability of the stimulus at the site. And it is generally a sharp pain of short duration, lasts as long as the stimulus is present and it is characterized by go good localization. Individual is able to localize the particular site where the sensitivity is initiated. Usually more sensitive to, to cold food items than the warm. Patient also tends to avoid the stimulus and there is no tenderness on percussion and radiologically no periapical changes may be visualized. So what are the conditions which are similar to uh, the dentinal sensitivity? One is a chipped tooth or fractured restorations or presence of dental caries, also a condition called as cracked tooth syndrome and uh, subsequent to application of dental bleaching agents. So how do we arrive at the diagnosis? Careful history with the clinical and radiographic examination is necessary before you arrive at a definitive diagnosis of dentinal sensitivity. It differs from the pulpal pain. Character of pain does not outlast the stimulus. Pain is mainly intensified by the thermal changes, sweet or sore. Hypersensitive pain can be duplicated by hot or cold application or by scratching the dentine whereas pulpal plane is explosive, intermittent and throbbing and can be affected by hot or cold. So how do we manage this very common uh, symptom that our patients complain of? There are three important uh, aspects here. One is the home care with the use of dentifrices or the toothpaste in-office treatment procedure which is carried out by a professional as well as patient education. The idea here is to plug the dental tubules preventing the fluid flow and thereby preventing the initiation of uh, the pain. Desensitize the nerve making it less responsive to stimulation and prevent the conduction of impulse to reduce the sensitivity. So what are the home care uh, uh, dentifrices? These are substances used with the toothbrush to aid in cleaning the accessible surface of teeth. And desensitizing agents present in the paste 
are for example strontium chloride 10 percent potassium nitrate 5 percent and sodium monofluorophosphate in office treatment can be uh, in the form of tubule sealants uh, by varnish application or placement of restorative resins or treatments that partially obturate the dental tubules like burnishing of dentine and application of chemical agents containing potassium oxalate, silver nitrate and stannous fluoride and dedicated treatment approaches like the iontophoresis wherein a certain ion is pushed into the dental tubule orifice through or via uh, application of a uh, low voltage current so that the particular ion blocks the dental tubule and thereby preventing the initiation of that uh, sensitivity. Lasers have also uh, in the recent times been used very effectively for the management of dentinal sensitivity. So patient education is also very important in this context. Dietary counseling is very crucial. Check on the type of food that they eat and reduce the intake of acidic food to avoid the enamel from being eroded by the sugar or citric uh, food. The tooth brushing technique is also important using the right technique at uh, all times when brushing the teeth is important. Use of the right tooth brush is also important. Less abrasive dentifrices need to be advised and plaque control on the whole is also very critical. So there are some recent advances like the use of nanotechnology and the Nomin uh, technology. So nanotechnology is one where it forms a new biomimetic appetite layer using nanohydroxyapatite. And this nanohydroxyapatite not only reduces the dental hypersensitivity but also has a sustained effect. And this is one of the important uh, benefits of using a nano particle to, to block the dental tubule. Demineralization can effectively be repaired by natural demineralization of defective parts in the tooth enamel. And uh, uh, one commercial product that is available is a claim. And Nomin technology in fact uses calcium, sodium, phosphosilicate elements naturally found in the teeth, particularly saliva. When combined with the saliva, these elements are released in the form of ions and are quickly available for remineralization of the exposed surface. So uh, these particles attach to the tooth and continue to release the ions and transform it into hydroxyapatite for up to two weeks. Thus dental tubules are occluded. So in summary, it is important that we realize uh, the aspect of dentinal hypersensitivity, its physiology as to how it is initiated and various schools of thoughts regarding the initiation of this uh, sensitivity. We also need to understand its causes and the patient experiences and all this culminating with an extensive or a comprehensive treatment regime which will effectively manage the common problem that our patients complain of. Thank you.